welcome. Oh, thank you very much for having me. And you, you look like Jonathan Pius. So I do, I do. Yeah. Uh, there's very little to distinguish us. Um, yeah. But that, that is the key question, first of all. I mean, is Jonathan Pye saying what you think? Um, I, we're, we're politically uh, aligned. I mean, we, we differ about certain... I don't, I don't care as much uh, about certain You're things. You're not as you know. angry. Well, no, I mean, uh, th th it's funny. There are certain topics. One, Trump is very easy to write for, and then in other respects really difficult because he does it himself. Um, th there, are bit, there are times when, I can, when it's easy. If I write about uh, the, the NHS or if I write about homelessness, or that's easy. That's easy, and that's, that's, that can come easy. Um, or if I, I, I write about freedom of speech, that I can write passionately about that. It's sometimes difficult to write passionately about Brexit, for example. It is the political moment of a generation you know um but it's incredibly dull uh, do you, you know what i mean and you've done it, it, that one as well i mean you? i've done yeah. a lot about brexit because you have to because it is so divisive and and, and um you, you know it's, but it is diff difficult to find the passion there sometimes with brexit you know what, what was the topic that you see as your your breakthrough moment yeah i mean i i never expect i had this character in my head and it was always about w imagine what news readers are like the minute they say cut and i imagine news readers are like right who's for a point you know that was the that was the joke that was the humor but but actually the first thing i did was political and it's just stayed ever since and it was the day jeremy corbyn got elected as labor leader and I kind of fancied him as Labour leader. I thought, well, you know, socialist in, front, in charge of a left-wing party. Imagine that, you know, whereas everyone was kind of, you know, he was kind of the, 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 the not the front runner, I guess. And I just so happened to have the TV on at the moment he got elected. And I believe it was the BBC um, that he got elected. Big round of applause. They cut to outside and the reporter, without a breath, said, how long do you think he's got? And I thought, there you go. Th there you go. You as a, the media, the, the media elite have condemned him. And it, and it took up until the last election for him to be taken seriously in any way, shape or form. And it angered me. It really just like, it really annoyed me. But I'm not one of those people that likes to go on Facebook and go, I vote Labour or I, I, I hate the Tories. I find it rather vulgar. But I really wanted to get on Facebook and write something because it just really annoyed me whether you agree with Corbyn's politics or not it was I was annoyed at the media and, the, and their that they decided that, you know, that he couldn't be the leader and I just thought this character in my head I'm going to do it I'm going to write it and I'm going to do it and, and then the next week uh, and that went up and that got a thousand views. You just views put that on I YouTube. just filmed it, put it on YouTube. It got a thousand views, which to me was amazing because it meant people I didn't know had watched it. And that was good enough for me. I'd been a struggling actor for 15 years. And so suddenly I was sort of thinking, oh, maybe I can create my own work. The next week, um, uh, what's his name? He wrote, who wrote I Am Dave. What, what, that, that book came out, the David, uh, the David Cameron sort of biography where, where you know, it was insinuated that he may have had a relationship with a farmyard animal. And I thought, well, this is too good to be true. I've got to write a bit about that. And then, and then one week I did something about, about the third week, I think, I, I did something and it just went completely, completely viral. And that was just a tirade against everything in, in uh, generally in politics. And, and uh, overnight, it, it got a million views. And I knew that, that my career had, I knew overnight that an opportunity, a door had opened for me. And, and, and I run with it ever since. Does Pi want to change the world? As much as anyone wants to change it. The type of person that Pi is, is the type of person we have in the pub that, can't not talk about politics and he also can't not talk about politics without getting angry about it and we all know those sorts of people so they purport to want to change the world but uh, but actually he's one of those people he would never be happy with his lot the, he's not really annoyed at Theresa May he's not really annoyed at the Tories I mean he is but he's really he's just annoyed that he's stood outside and, and he's he's, he's, he's annoyed that he's not he's not got your job <laughs> and then if he got your job he'd be annoyed that he didn't have John's job yeah. and then you know that's who he is so, so there are certain things that by virtue of me doing what I've done I've become more passionate about than I wouldn't that, that I would not have done three years ago but it so, sounds so, a little uh, as if you're you're sort of in that slight camp that is occupied by quite a lot of Corbyn supporters who believe that there is this thing called the mainstream media that has got a dominant you know ideology and narrative and no, that that's what you've got to kick against no 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 I don't I don't feel that I have to kick against I don't feel that I have uh, I'm often accused of having an agenda 
Um, and that's normally that I'm accused of that when I say something that people don't agree with. So, for example, I did something about the gender pay gap the other day and, and I've been accused of having an agenda about that. No, I just watched the news for the last three months and I kept reading headlines that said Ryanair pay, pay women 87% less than men. And then I read the article and you go, no, the headline's disingenuous. It, it's not the truth. And it's been playing on my mind, playing on my mind. I don't have an agenda, but you go, I've got to write something that, about this. But that is an agenda, isn't it? I mean, your agenda is to correct what you think is a, is a wrongful portrayal of the truth. I guess so, but, 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 but also it's not an agenda. It's an interesting satirical take. Yeah. The, sa the, sa the, sa the satire of that. And, and also, actually, yes, it is worth pointing out that if you read any of these articles... The minute you go into it, you go, but that's to do with the type of work and da, da, da. And you go, so they're not paying women less than men then? No, but well, why is the headline? So I suppose there is that agenda there, but, but it's, it's interesting to write. It's, it's, it's interesting to watch. And the majority of people, even if they don't always agree with the politics, go, that's an interesting take. That particular thing, maybe the agenda was there to open up a serious adult discussion about I mean, gender pay rather than, you know, well, that, in that particular Rather than what you were seeing on television, isn't it? Yes, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely. I mean, that particular pie video yeah. is different to all your others in yeah. that it's not pie to camera mm -hmm. talking to his producer, Tim. It's, it's pie I, interviewing... I, a feminist. I could not have. W w I, 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 um, I write the majority of my work with a, with a, a co-writer called Andrew Doyle, and and, and, and this one was particularly a a, 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 a co-written project. And, and and when we were writing it, we wrote it a couple of times, and it was him ranting to camera about these headlines are disingenuous. We very very quickly understood because I come a up against it every single day that that if people find if a certain type of liberal left find my argument uh, or, or disagree with my argument. The reason will be because I'm a straight white man, because of the color of my skin, my gender and my sex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you go, I don't want that to stop the, that is where the conversation ends most of the time. Because the implication is if you're a straight white male and you don't understand, the implication actually is you're a bigot. That's the implication. Therefore, I don't need to discuss with you. No, I didn't want that. I wanted an actual discussion. So we, so we thought it would be interesting for, for, for those words to come out of a feminist. But also the interesting, the satire on that is, is the, the prescribed line from the media was, um, uh, you, yes, this company pay women less than that. So Pi is sat there ready to be told by a feminist. And she... She takes the opposite vent. You go, well, no, that's not true. That's not true. And it's really not feminist. It's not a feminist thing to, to, to uh, make women victims kind of thing. Um, so that was really interesting. You and that was fun. That was that, though, didn't you? I mean, well, no, I, I mean, I was surprised well, at how... You took a lot of flack for I, it. I took a lot of flack for it. And I don't mind taking a lot of flack for it as, lo as long as the, the argument is your facts are wrong here. But the argument seemed to be, oh, straight white man. And you go, look, why, why can't I open a discussion about something? You know, what, was there that. any problem, do you think, in retrospect, with a sketch being written by two men, articulated by a woman about gender pay, uh, I, I would I would vehemently disagree with that argument. That the idea that I'm not allowed to write. I mean, were about you putting words in her mouth? I suppose. No, I mean, I mean, we we did send it to. I mean, one there was an actress, and I picked her specifically because I, I know her, and and on her Facebook page there had been a few things. I go, she's gonna. So we we went through, we dissected that script with her, and she. Um, uh, we we sent it to two or three um, well-known feminists. Uh, I, there are very few women that I showed the script to who didn't agree with the, the general premise. There are obviously a few... I mean, there's a bit I say about Matt Smith getting paid more than Claire Foy, and it's because he was Dr. Who. I'm not sure I really agree with that, but there was a gag there about his pay packet being bigger on the inside. So it was just a... It was a... I needed to get that joke in. So there's a, you know... Um, I, I, don't, I don't buy this, this idea that... that, that that, that we can't have a dis I find it regressive I really find it regressive that that, that tell me my tell me that my argument is wrong because of something that I've said rather rather than, rather than the color of your skin is why you're wrong and even if the color of my skin is the reason I'm wrong that's the reason I'm wrong how am I wrong tell me how I'm tell me the fact that is wrong yeah. I suppose they would argue um, that in 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 sort of brushing away the sort of the reason for the gender pay gap is because women don't get promoted into senior roles mm -hmm. and don't hold mm -hmm. the, 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 the top jobs in the company, mm -hmm. that's what really explains the pay gap. Yes. 
Um, which we, which is totally... If you're going to explore that to the same degree mm -hmm. that you've explored mm -hmm. the misapprehension around no. the figures, I mean, I think then, you're, then you're dismissing the problem. You're absolutely right. And that's why, I mean, normally my pieces are about three minutes long. That's about seven, eight minutes long, that bit. And we work really, really hard. That That is addressed. That That is totally addressed within that. Um, why are men in... To, you know that is the reason why um, that, that there are differences people get paid differently in different jobs I mean we, we explored as many avenues as we possibly could when it uh, so, uh, so I disagree with you when you said we brushed it aside we, we actually went right let's look at all the arguments that we, we could have that would go against our argument and try and answer them and, and we probably didn't answer all of them but but um, so did that one backfire then do you think no 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 not at all i think it opened a discussion I, I had a huge amount of positive response from it from women saying thank god because this there's this whole little speech at the end whether you agree with the right at the end this the, 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 the character talks about what feminism should be about and also this idea that that it, a woman who disagrees with uh, it could be anything, the gender pay gap or the way it's presented or, you know, that, for example, the hashtag Me Too campaign. A woman that, dis that, that has questions about that is somehow the wrong type of woman, the wrong type of feminist. Um, the implication being they're an uh, internalised misogynist. I, heard, I hear that all the time, well, she's an internalised misogynist. I mean, that, to me, is misogyny, uh, which we say in the piece, that that's misogyny. To, to assume that a woman that has a different point of view to you is the wrong type of woman and is, and, and is a misogynist, therefore. That, to me, is, is anti-feminism. It's shutting down debate. And, I mean, it, and it's done so casually now from the liberal left. It's done daily, the implication of bigotry. I mean, so again, again, the sort of the, the target, though, of your... The, the, the the targets of your satire are different. Every yes, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 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 constant is the media, isn't it? Because because yeah. yes. what you are saying is that here's a man who's fighting against what he's being told yes. to say. Yes, I mean that that, that is and much more what it is, is 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 a satire on. Most people tune in for the politics, but I see it as a satire on the media. So so, you know. so that's what the, what I what I want to ask you is: so do, do you think that's true? You know that 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 television reporters presenters are following a narrative that is. A dominant narrative that I, well, they've well, kind I, of been I, I, I know that what to say. Well, you are in many respects being told what to s say. I imagine. I imagine that that um, you have an editorial bent, no matter where you are in newspapers and television. Um, for me, it's comedic. It's not really me going, oh, it's one big conspiracy. I uh, know I don't see that. I just think it's amusing that when the cameras come out and you've got the Channel 4, blah, 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 that the minute the cats go, what do you say what, to Jon Snow? Saying, yeah. And I bet, it's, I bet it's fascinating and I bet it's funny and I bet it, make, it, it means that um, uh, Krishnan Guru Murphy, presented by Krishnan Guru Murphy. No, Krishnan Guru Murphy is a human being with foibles and, and mistakes and, and maybe some bad language. And, and, and that to me is interesting and it's artistically funny and he's a funny character. It, it, it is not, there isn't an agenda where I'm going power to the people. You can't trust you, the media, you know, that kind of thing. No, um, and, and the that, that's my only sort yeah, of objection, yes. I think, watching to them is you kind of, you're, 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 um, you're setting up this idea that it's all lies. You know that that reporters are telling you, and I, I guess it's a joke. I um, I it, yeah, I mean that that is the conceit of it. But 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 no, I think, and also, I mean, Pi uh, as, as am I. I mean, he's done certain things where you go, for God's sake, put the Guardian down and read the Daily Mail once a week. Yes. Read the Telegraph. Watch Channel Four News. Also watch Sky News. You know, um, so actually, he's encouraging you. I mean, I love Twitter, and I find it very very useful for what I do. But I follow the Mail, Channel Four, Breitbart. The, the lot and I take from all and I read things that I find objectionable and I follow Jacob Rees-Mogg and I feel uh, and I and I follow Corbyn and that to me is is a part of what Pi is about if, if I do have an agenda it's like can we please debate better and stop assuming that people are are that stop assuming that every sun reader is um uh, you know, a racist or whatever. I mean, I've, I've just finished a live show and one of the last lines he says is, you're more than welcome to assume that everyone that reads The Sun is a racist bigot, but until you start talking to those readers, you'll never have an election go the way you want it to again. And I maybe, I think, if there is an agenda, I'm going, spread your, uh, as a consumer of the news, s spread more widely where you get your information from, because it can only help uh, inform you. What, what's really different about what you've done, though, is that you are, I guess, the first big social media satirist. I guess so. as you say, yeah. you've done yeah. this on, on YouTube and Twitter, and 
you know, what we know all too obviously now about social media is you just you've no idea who's consuming, mm -hmm. you know, you yes. or what they really think. Yes. Um, and I just wonder to what extent you you pick up from the feedback that Jonathan Pye is misunderstood. Uh, um, I, I, there, there is often an, an accusation that, that just because someone who's right wing likes my work, that makes me right wing. There's also an idea that, that um, people might not understand its satire and therefore I need to take responsibility for that. Well, uh, Do right wingers like you though? Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah I, mean, lefties, I, mean, I mean, mainly lefties, but yeah. I love it when people come up at the end of the show and go, I voted Tory. But also, you know, there are particular things like something I did recently about freedom of speech. Freedom of speech somehow has become this right wing yeah. uh, kind of idea and you go, well, oh my God, when did, we, when did the liberal left lose lose that um you know so, so i be th I, I have a you know um some some sort of right wing so you know what's the problem with that you know but, but and, and also you know when people sort of say well maybe people don't think it's satire it's like i'm not gonna write my work for stupid people you know i'm not i'm sorry if you don't know it's satire i can't help you i you know what, what i mean is i suppose when your your corbyn stuff mm -hmm. probably got spread by communists yep. and momentum yep. people on twitter and yep. that that kind of mm -hmm. grows your audience and people immediately think they know who you are now mm -hmm. and that oh well he's one of us yeah um and and you know that must be a bit of a misconception y yes but i but, really but i enjoy playing them, no, no well yeah. i'm not i'm not a momentum i mean i'm i'm, I'm uh, f for what it's worth i'm a member of labor you know but f that's neither here nor there um i mean I, I i must admit sometimes you know like recently i've done a couple that have been n not uh, not the norm, you know, for, for, for what I do, i.e. this bit about freedom of speech, this taking a look at the gender pay gap. So you do kind of sort of think, I probably need to do one about the NHS soon. I need to do a stamp just to remind people that I am. I mean, uh, uh, in many respects, I am considered from the, uh, uh, quite explicitly from the comedy world, considered a right wing comedian, which I find absolutely bizarre. Goodbye. 90 I, I'm not going to name names, but it's quite uh, quite obvious over th that I am considered. They criticise uh, you. They as crit a right criticise me as a right wing uh, mouthpiece, and you go. Ninety five percent of what I do is is pro NHS, anti Tory, pr pro Corbyn to a certain extent. It's a bit more difficult now because he is es established, and you kind of go, I can't. You know, um, he's one of them now in a kind of way. And and just because I occasionally go, you know, the, like the big one that I did was when Trump got in, and I, we just I just thought it would be interesting to go. I'm I've got four or eight years to have a go at Trump. Why not put the boot into Hillary and go, you must be terrible to have lost to this man. The left need to debate better. Out of that, I mean, the amount of th this right-wing nonsense, it's like it's not right-wing to, to, to hold a mirror up to, 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 to my side going, you, you're getting it wrong. There, there is clearly then a serious purpose to what you're doing. I mean, it is fun and it's comedy, but... It's not you're my... You're essentially a, a serious operator, aren't you? I don't consider I consider it every week a piece of work it's a piece of writing it's a piece of analysis or a piece of comedy or a piece of satire I don't I think if what I do you think it's it purposes satire or what I do what you do uh, I uh, what's its purpose uh, for me personally, it's uh, a, a career. That's that's its purpose for me, and, and I'm loving doing it for other people. I love when I when I'm doing my live show and I see old people laughing along with young 15, 16 year olds. Maybe its purpose is it's getting um, some really young people to really think about politics. I mean, I did th something for the, the last election I did, I really did think, right, actually, maybe I should take myself a bit seriously. And I wrote a, a couple of pieces, one that was uh, registered to vote, which was specifically aimed at young people. It did brilliantly well. And maybe I got 100,000 kids to register to vote. You go, now that's brilliant. I don't care which way you vote, just you registered to vote. And the other thing I did was a piece about voting for policy rather than personality. And that did really well. And you go, now maybe if a few people really looked into it, you go, now that, maybe if I'm helping people engage with politics, that's a great thing. But I think all the Pi's success is down to one, he vents spleen at Trump and the Tories and people go, yeah, that's what I think. Oh, but I've articulated it with more swear words. Um, and and s certainly with things like Brexit and Trump, people are, you know, people, are which I find very odd, but people are still picking themselves up after the Brexit vote. You know, they're still going, I can't believe that has happened. And they want someone to articulate uh, 
what's going on in the world. Well, what about satire more broadly, then? The, the way I describe satire, and I might be wrong, because satire uh, can be anything. You know, 1984 is a work of satire. Have I Got News For You is political satire. Um, the day-to-day is satire, what I do. They, you know, they're all, they're all different. But I, I always think of it as, as if you, if, if, this sounds so odd, but if a, a mug of tea would be to be presented by the news, you'd go, it's a rectangle with a C coming out the side, right? If you were to satirically look at a cup of tea, you'd go, it's a circle with a little thing, because you're looking at it from the bottom of it. You're just looking at it from a different angle. You're shining a light on it from maybe a different angle. That, that's the way I see it. So I am presenting the news, although it's not, um, just from a different angle, with a different take. For, 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 for that, that's all I see, what my brand of it is. But, I mean, I've heard you talk about Pi in relation to Ben Elton, you know, and, and how sort of in between Pi and Ben Elton, um, but not a vacuum in satire, but not a lot going on. Why do you think that was? Um, I, think, I think it's very difficult. I mean, n- normally political satire uh, is, is, is from the left, right? If, if, if you accept that that's generally the, the form. Well, we had a Labour government, in inverted commas, and, and although it was unpopular near the end, it, 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 it was difficult to have a go at your own side. That's, that's my take on it. Um, and I think we all kidded ourselves, or maybe lefties considered themselves, yeah, we've got a left-wing government. It's like, no, we don't. We've just got a sort of a rebranded Tory government. It's centrist, essentially just, just right of centre, really. Um, um, politics is much more interesting now, as opposed to having these two centrist parties sort of vying it out. So it was always personality over politics. So, so the, the only satire you could really do is like Ed Miliband's stupid voice or... David Cameron's posh. They're st- they're just, you, you read their manifestos, you kind of go, well, you can just swap between them. You look at the last election, whether you don't like Corbyn or can't bear him or think he's a commie, you had, you had two manifestos that were demonstrably different. You go, now it's exciting. You know, when, when we had a, a coalition government, you had a right-wing government for the first time in uh, a, a while being reined in by a sort of a middle lefty, and you go, that's, that's interesting. And then, and then when Corbyn comes in and you've got a left and a right, that's interesting. And now we've got Brexit, which people are still trying to get their head around. Um, uh, people want explanations. People want explanations of how they got Brexit so wrong, how everyone got it so wrong. It's like, well, you're not engaging with people. No, no one, no, with, with Brexit, people are so, were so scared to suggest that they were gonna vote leave, bigot. No, arg- no argument, no why, no persuasion, you're a bigot. You mu- you're like Nigel Farage then. You, you, that's how you lose. That's how Trump got in. If you're thinking of voting for Trump, you're a sexist, you're a misogynist, and you, and you, and you, you want to fill women up because he does. You're not going, what is it about him you're thinking of voting for? You just go, you're a bigot. So it's interesting now. It's interesting. There's the, the, that's my way in, is you going, come on, let's have a debate about it. Let's have a sensible debate, which is ridiculous, of course, because my forum is Facebook and Twitter, which are the worst places to have a sensible, a sensible debate, I guess. I mean, wh- where, d- where did this come from, though? Because it's not, you know, you're, you're not a comedian. By trade, are you? No, it's not, you no. know, you and a lot of people would argue, yeah, yes, <laughs> quite clearly, not a comedian. Yeah, I mean, you, you you were an actor, actor out of work for 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 you know, I graduated in two thousand, and you know, a lot of outdoor Shakespeare and the occasional uh, advert. You know, it was it was tough. It was a real real struggle. Um, I but was, were you always I was political? I, I, I always enjoyed American politics. Always enjoyed American politics because you could look at it from the outside. So I mean, I watched Obama from start to finish and loved it. And um, but th- it was when the coalition government came in that I suddenly because I hated Blair, never voted for him, and I, w- I was always sort of left leaning. Couldn't bear him. Always found him totally disingenuous. Never believed a word he said when he came out and sort of you know, nearly cried about Diana. I was like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you, you know. So it was difficult because they didn't have a team, you know. What's your um, own background then? What, what, where was your childhood? Uh, I was in, uh, grew up in Somerset, you know, um, you know, comp, you know, um, I went to a uni to, to, so I went to a drama school, but it was a, 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 in a uni because, you know, I couldn't afford it to go to anywhere else, you know. Um, pretty, you know, and then a struggle, you know, and a real struggle. It's really horrible to know what you want to do and not be able to do it. And and financially, it's I guess in your twenties when you're 
struggling to buy lunch. Yeah, that's what your 20s are for. But now you go, wow, what an, what an extraordinary uh, thing that's happened to me. Yes, I have spats on Twitter and certain elements don't like it. But actually what I'm actually doing is I'm writing a character. I'm inhabiting that character. I'm playing, you know, I just did two nights at the Hammersmith Apollo. You go, that would never have happened. You know, as third spear carrier on 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 you know in the RSC, it, which would have been the maximum I could have hoped for. You know, on Twitter mm -hmm. is, is 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 it you on Twitter or is it Jonathan Pye? I I it's it's me, and and when I get into spa, I, I mean, of late the last few weeks, I've had to just go Tom calm it because I've turned into one of those people that I dislike. Go on, why? Yeah. Why, why? But it's people... Because you're breaking the sort of never explain your jokes thing, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I've had to quite, <laughs> quite a lot recently. What really boils my blood is this implication of bigotry or is this implication of stupidity or, or the lack of thought that... that um, and I can't help but dive in and go, how dare you uh, imply I'm a Nazi apologist? It's happened <laughs> all the time. A rape apologist. I've had that three or four times in the last month. A rape apologist. Over what? Um, it was, it's a case that, that I've been following for quite some time. And, and it, a guy was arrested because he had um, his, his pug dog, um, his girlfriend thinks it's the cutest thing on the planet. And he wanted to, and he explicitly says it. You should never explain your jokes, but he explicitly says, I'm going to teach this dog to be the worst thing I can imagine. I'm going to teach it to be a Nazi. And he trains the dog to respond it, it, it is unpleasant to respond to the phrase gas the Jews and then he teaches the dog to do a Nazi salute. Now, it uh, doesn't matter to me whether you find it funny. The, 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 the context and the intent is clearly comedic and anyone that says otherwise is um, uh, lying to themselves, although many people have argued that, that perhaps he is ironically trying to incite racial hatred. Um, what's really interesting, my, my co-writer, he, he runs a, a comedy night and they showed this film because it's uh, to a live audience. And by the end, the live audience are in fits of laughter. And it's quite extraordinary if you put it in that It's all context. about context. Yes, it's all about context. The, he, this man has been convicted and is facing prison. And the Scottish courts, the, 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 which it, you don't actually get tried in front of a jury, it was the, what do they call it, the Proculator Fiscal or something, the... the so just one man. And he basically said that context and intent do not matter. Basically, you can now go to prison for what is clearly a joke. So I wrote a piece about this. Um, it's the thin end of a wedge. And uh, basically, on, on the back of that, I ended up being uh, accused of being sort of a Nazi. With comedians turning and, on you. Mm, absolutely. And I thought, it was just a, I thought it was just so obvious that you go, this is a real, really dangerous precedent. To me as a liberal, uh, I consider myself sort of a true liberal, freedom of speech is an immovable right for horrible people as well as nice people. If you're a horrible person, if you're a racist, for example, I want to hear it, <laughs> you know, as long as you're not inciting hatred, as long as you're not inciting violence. If your opinion is that you, the colour of your skin makes you superior to me because of the colour of my skin, you should be able to, 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 to say it because then I can argue against you. If, if, if it's illegal for you to say it, it bubbles up. So that's just the general uh, sort of level of what surely freedom of speech should be. But on this particular case, uh, the idea that the entire comedy world isn't, isn't really scared because you can take anything out of context and you can take the intent away that doesn't matter anymore. If you're offended, if you are causing offence, that should be, causing offence should be legislated against. Um, Humour and, 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 and offence are, are, are so subjective. They're so, so similar. Um, I remember going to see Frankie Boyle, and, and he's an acquired taste. I think he's wonderful. I think he's brilliant. I think he's a brilliant writer. I remember going to see him at the Hammersmith Apollo, and I was sat there, and I, I thought it was a wonderful show, and there were two or three points over that night where I went, oh, Frankie, do you know what? Too much. Do you know what? And all around me, people were laughing. And then five minutes later, so I was offended. I was offended. Five minutes later, I'm laughing, and the guy next to me is going, oh, no. It says it all. Um, and I just think uh, it, it, it amazes me that the, the left aren't really scared that the right seem to have claimed freedom of speech as their thing. The idea that Katie Hopkins and Tommy Robinson are the only people that are shouting about freedom of speech 
doesn't prove that freedom of speech is a right-wing um, uh, idea. It proves that the right have gone, we'll have that. And, and, and the left are running scared. The left are scared to say that they are pro-freedom of sp speech because they're, they're, they don't want to be branded right-wing. It's a very, very bizarre state of affairs. And it's something that I've learned since doing Pi, that freedom of speech isn't... That freedom of speech is a controversial topic. I, I, I find it very bizarre to me. Are you becoming less left-wing yourself? I, I, I mean, as I, a result of this whole experience, it, it, it certainly made me. Uh, I mean, but when I started, I was very much Guardian Easter. The Guardian is my paper, and blah 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 blah. Uh, I, I am now, which I wasn't before. I am very um, mistrusting of gender politics and identity politics. Uh, I, I, I've, I find it. I just don't see how you can win an argument it, it, when everything is framed with uh, gender, sexuality, colour of skin. Every argument is won or lost on in those terms. Uh, it doesn't seem to me to be uh, a way to win an argument. Um, uh, 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 that's the main thing that I, that I've that I have started to to really look at from afar and and, and go. I, I think this identity politics is is being taken a little bit too far. And it's not left wing. It's not socialist. You know, the problem with identity politics is it's a middle class obsession. And left wing and bit socialism, that kind of thing, it used to be about the working classes. And, and that's sort of forgotten now. You know, it's, it's forgotten and it's more about, um, it's no longer about class struggle. Uh, and that's surely what, you know, I, 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 there's, a line in the, um, there's a line in the show I just did. Straight white male privilege appears to apply if he's a millionaire or if he's living on the street and he can't afford shoes. And, and I, I see that everywhere on social media that, that uh, and I, I find it and it's very difficult to argue against because I am a straight white man and that's the argument that's coming at me it's you can't bat it off because you're right I am straight and white and male but did, did you understand I, 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 I mean I, I, I'm, I, I want to ask your opinion but I know you're interviewing me but I, I don't know if I'm maybe I'm totally missing the point I, I don't know no I mean I, th I think it depends what else you're saying doesn't it yes because um, I think arguments aren't only put down just on identity. There's always something else that you said. So in your, in your gender yeah. pay yes. uh, sketch, it's yeah. not the fact that you're a man that people object to. It's a fact that you are um, undermining you know, the, the whole case around gender pay Absolutely. that they have campaigned for Absolutely. for years and years and years. Absolutely. But and have finally got some figures that enable them to go to their employers and go, give me a pay rise. Yes. And you're and saying, I'm merely oh, pointing it doesn't out work that All, way, all I'm merely pointing out is that the figures are disingenuous. Yeah. And, and you, you cannot expect someone not to point that out. I mean, it, I had an argument on Twitter again, but it was, it, it's this idea that and the only reason why they said that the piece was deliberately misleading, and I said, why is it deliberately misleading? It's like, well, people might have thought it was a real interview. Go, well, right, well, take that aside. What facts did I state as a writer, as a performer, as a piece of satire, what facts within the piece were wrong? They couldn't, they, they, they were, I don't mind. I'm trying to create a debate there. I'm trying to dispel a few myths, and I don't mind if I piss a few people off doing it. And have you been surprised to encounter the the number of these sorts of views on social media. I mean, it, I mean, I mean so when I'm on Twitter, I, I'm constantly surprised by the number of people, you know, who talk total rubbish. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then you kind of say, oh, well, maybe they're trolls. Maybe they're in a Russian yeah. Twitter factory. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, they're yeah, not yeah, real yeah, people. Yeah. No, 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 no. But no, actually, no. you know, a lot of them are clearly they're, they're, real yes, people. Yes, yes. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me. And, and I have to stop engaging with people where you go, your argument is ridiculous and therefore I, I've got to stop. Um, but, you know, uh, that's what Twitter's for as well. You know, it's there for people to go, you're wrong and I'm going to slag you off a bit and not be particularly nice about it. And you go, OK, fine. And, and I hope most of the time I try and be the better person, but sometimes I can't help it and I fire something off. And you go, oh, lost the moral high ground. Damn, you know. Um, no, you know, and, and if, it's, if it's having a debate, if it's opening a serious debate, phew, hey, it's, it's all good. Speaking of losing the moral high ground. <laughs> yes. Um, you worked for RT for six months. Uh, yes. Um, te technically worked for them, I guess, yeah. Ru Russia Today, for people who aren't uh, aware of it, Russian state media, basically. Yep. 
what how come right what, what was that about i would uh, yeah. <laughs> okay so i put these uh little things out the third one went absolutely viral right and um and i got this call from this and uh, you know uh, i'm uh, Ignorance is no excuse, right? But I'd never heard of Russia Today, RT. And, uh, and um, they said, would you like to come in for an interview? So I went in and was in this wonderful studio, a bit like this, and I had a live interview, and I spoke about my work. And it's the first time anyone had ever asked me about my work, so that was wonderful. Absolutely happy to do it. And then they said, we'd like to chat to you. And so we, I had a meeting with them, and they, but they were, they, you know, they schmoozed me a bit and blah, blah, blah. And I was sat opposite the table, and I said, you want this, don't you? You want this pie thing? And they said, yes, we do. And I just went, mm, no, not really. Um, and then we, we chatted some more. So, contextually, I'd been skipping meals for years. I'd been, I'd been below the poverty line for years. And they offered me, I think, 400 quid a week to air what I had done, right? This was the proviso, though, and where I grew these balls from, but because someone was offering me a weekly wage for the first time in a decade, basically. I said, you don't get to see a script before I film it. I show you what I've done. You either use it or you don't. It's up to you. You don't edit it. If you I think they edited one once because there was something that was technically libelous about David Cameron um, forging his tax returns or something. I can live with that. Um, I'm glad I'm not with them now in the present climate. Uh, it allowed me for six months to spend my week writing three minutes because I didn't have to be in a call center and do those awful jobs I've been doing for a decade. I got to go into a very small um, newsroom once a week and, and just get that vibe. You know, they're all, most of them are all British. Most of them all knew what they were working for, but it was a job. It was, it was massively useful. It's gonna be an albatross around my neck for the rest of my career. I, I couldn't go back and change it because I wouldn't be sat here right now if I hadn't been afforded that opportunity. And the only other opportunities I was being afforded was for more money, but they wanted editorial control. And I wasn't at that stage of the game prepared to do it. So um, y give me all you've got. It was got. a mistake, basically. You know, no, I mean, I, no, it wasn't a mistake. No, I, I wouldn't be sat here now if, they had, if I had not been an afforded complete artistic freedom to do what I wanted to do and there was a, a, a platform to see. So you on. couldn't have afforded to carry on? Oh, um, no, no, no. It would have lasted two or three weeks. Is Jonathan Pye all consuming? Or can you do other things? I, as well? I, 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 it has been for the last two or three years. And I, have, uh, I went through a stage about six months ago going, maybe after this tour, I'll, I'll, I'll slowly retire him. But I feel really reinvigorated after that last tour. And I, after those bits of controversy, not that I'm courting it, but it actually, you know, I threw a grenade at the comedy world and I said do you either do you either agree with free speech or you don't where do you stand and I was amazed the battle lines that were drawn there and that but that was exciting it, it, a bit annoying and a bit oh, infuriating infuriating if that's a word um, and you know the thing with the gender pay gap you go, it was interesting and it caused a discussion and it pissed a few people off but a, it, a lot of people liked it and you go, now that's some really interesting work there if, if I do have an agenda it's like can we please debate better and stop assuming that people are are that stop assuming that every Sun Reader is, um, uh, you know, a racist or whatever. I mean, I've, I've just finished a live show, and one of the last lines he says is, "You're more than welcome to assume that everyone that reads the Sun is a racist bigot, but until you start talking to those readers, you'll never have an election go the way you want it to again." So maybe that is your way of changing the world, uh, fighting I, for freedom of speech. Fighting for freedom of speech. Fight. You, it's fighting for debate. I think the left, and I'm a lefty. I'm a lefty, and we've lost the art of debate. We we shut people up. We shut people up because, um, you know, if, if I see someone on Twitter who is defending Trump or defending the Tories or defending something that I disagree with, I follow them. I follow them. I want to know what it is they've got to say. We've lost that art. And freedom of speech is, is essential to that. It's, it's the core of it. It's the core of democracy, the ability to debate and discuss. So students who know platform and all of that? The idea that... that, that University campuses are some of the most regressive. This, this uh, Antifa coming in the other day and shouting Jacob Rees-Mogg down. I tweeted something going Antifa acting like fascists. They're shouting down freedom of speech. I would have happily sat there and listened to Jacob Rees-Mogg speak as someone who fundamentally disagrees with his politics. Why? Because that's how you win against him. You know, um, uh, we, we've lost the art of, of, of debate and freedom of speech is 
a massive, massive central point to that. And yeah, all right, if I could change the world, um, the left need to reclaim freedom of speech and we need to reclaim how to debate people that we don't like. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you.